Greetings, everybody. My name is Greg Schleter. I am a husband and father of seven wonderful children. In just a moment, I'm going to introduce you to our two other co-hosts and our guests. Before that, though, I want to share that in the next hour, we're doing something epically important, exciting. It's new. What's that? We're launching an opportunity geared to men who aspire to be godly men, who aspire to be the best version of themselves here on this earth and into eternity. If you're a woman, don't go anywhere. We invite you to eavesdrop. Who's ever invited you to do that? Well, we're inviting you to sit in if you were a listen in on a man conversation. You'll get better insight into what makes us tick. You'll know how more fully to pray for us, which the Lord knows we need. So please tune in because we need your prayers. And certainly if you have men in your life who aspire to make it to heaven, to be the most God made them to be, invite them. So this was inspired, this moment, this thing that we're launching, you're in the sandbox with us, responding to a prompting that we know is gonna develop over time. But this was inspired by information emerging from this coronavirus thing that pornography has spiked dramatically. Now, corona means crown. In the midst of this crisis, we're being given the opportunity to rediscover Christ. As men were called to sacrifice for our wives and families as Jesus Christ gave his life for his church. We're not playing games. We're going after the difficult challenges. We want to keep it real. So we're calling this man up. If you go right now to Pentecost365.us, this is broadcast over the radio and it's streaming live over YouTube and Facebook. So at Pentecost365.us, you will see our handsome mugs eventually. But now you're going to see a screen with a logo that says man up. And if you're just listening, you, you'll see a yellow, like the road sign, the turnaround sign, the yellow sign that's going in one direction and it makes a U to turn around in the other direction. That's makes the you of the man up, the you of the up. And uh, what is that all about? Well, we're going down a road, right? All of us like a road trip, we're going down a road. And many of us at some point recognize, you know, I'm not doing this well. And I may be even going in an opposite direction of where I need to go. Most of us men know that with certain things in our lives, but we feel helpless to turn around. But in our heart of hearts, we know we need to, we have to. So man up is course a double entendre it's to turn around and to do it forthrightly boldly realizing we're not there but together god not only calls us to be there he equips us to be there so check that out right now as it's live on pentecost365.us and streaming okay so with that said let me introduce our awesome host just give us a quick overview of who you people are we'll start with mike waskovich how you doing mike i'm good Nice to see you again, Greg. Awesome. So, Mike Waskovich, uh, broadcasting from Huron, Ohio. Uh, happily married, going on 24 years this summer. Um, have eight beautiful children. Uh, six are also in heaven. Um, age range is from 22 down to five. So, there's my daughter walking past in an Ohio State blanket there. Five awesome. girls, three boys. Um, cradle Catholic. Love my faith. Love working with uh, Greg and Image Trinity and, and really excited about today's show. Awesome. And I like the Superman emblazoned on your chest. It's Ugh. a high standard. He's got to be the best superhero, though. It's just my, my strong opinion Absolutely. in that conversation. Who surpasses Superman? He's the man. Anyways, let's go to Walt Erickson all the way in Michigan. Walt, do they have you chained there with the uh, very easygoing politics of that state? They can't chain me down. I'm too close to Ohio. Walt, tell us about yourself. A Superman t-shirt got stolen, so if you guys have seen it. Um, I, am, I am also happily married. We have six children, one in heaven. And uh, I am over the border from Ohio, just a fuzz into Michigan, where we're on like lockdown, quarantine, not allowed to do anything, but I could care less what those people say. Um, also excited about this show and uh, very blessed to actually have a pretty good conversation with my wife about the topic. Mm. Uh, at a time. So I'll awesome. uh, share that later. We're going to actually do a quick intro of our guest before we get to him in full glory because uh, he's a brother in Christ and we are blessed to be shoulder to shoulder with him in the battle. This is a battle and he's a man who comes from the battle. He's an Air Force Academy grad. And uh, just, just a quick introduction before we get to you in earnest, Pastor Bo. I'm originally from New York, New York, uh, Queens, New York. So my favorite, I'm sorry, is not Spider-Man, but it is uh, it's not Superman, it's Spider-Man, because he's from Queens, too. I like him. Yeah, yeah he's cool. Keep him. 
Um, I'm married with, uh, to Heather, three kids, uh, and one boy, two girls. And uh, I, I own a business as well as being a pastor of a church called Family Christian Center in South Toledo. My, my business is uh, dealing with decorative glass and glass flooring, so that pays the bills, so to speak, so that I can live out the passion of doing God's work. And in 2012, uh, I began working against uh, the sex industry, per se, by helping men get free from pornography and sexual sin. We call that the abolition of slavery. So it's been awesome. a passion of our, this church and mine and a, the team for about eight years now. And we've been had, we've... Mm. We work one-on-one -on -one or in small groups to help men and women uh, walk in freedom. Awesome. So we're going to go back to our uh, storyboard here where we can see tonight's theme. And again, those of you who are just listening live on the radio, you can join us at Pentecost365.us. It's not necessary. You'll just see more of the visual. And there you'll see an image of a bonfire on this beautiful lake. Why? Because men really like to be in nature. We like uh, the crackle of a fire. We like, uh, you know, the elements to be out there. And uh, it's a place where men can gather and share. So kind of imagine yourself gathered around this fire tonight and just keeping it real, having a beverage and just being brotherly, prayerful, and just being honest about real things. Anyway, so you see the Man Up logo there again with Greg, Mike, and Walt. I know that's not alphabetical, but it is in terms of our height. So I don't know. I thought I'd go in that direction. So our guest tonight, of course, is Pastor Bo. We're going to get to him in earnest in a moment. But I want to ask and launch this first program by asking the question, do you want to be blessed? It's a simple question. Do you want to be blessed? I think in this culture, just stop there for a second. Most of us think blessing is just a passive thing, that if we pray to be blessed, it doesn't require anything from us. It doesn't require cooperation or receiving it. But like any gift, I kind of said it in that sentence right there. We got to receive it. It's being poured out. God wants to bless us, but there's an act, a decision, a choice to receive that blessing. And here we are focusing on this program, Matthew 5, 8, Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, blessed. We want to be blessed, so what does it take? It's a good question, right? Are the pure of heart, not just the pure of action, not just those who maybe have a litmus test and they're checking all the boxes and they're doing it right, but deeper than that, in a level of our dispositions, which our catechism says is the heart of disciplines. I'll say that again. Dis dispositions are the heart of discipline. So pure of heart in that world of imagination, that world of what we think about, what captures our deepest soul. So blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. This is critical, brothers and sisters. If we want to go to heaven this is a non-negotiable. If we don't get this right, we will get nothing else right in our lives. This is the foundation of the blessing that God wants to pour forth in our lives. And of course, we see the attack today in the form of pornography and many other things. But we're going to discuss today, and Pastor Bo is going to unveil this for us, it goes deeper than just not watching porn or structuring our lives to eliminate it. That's an important part. But I want to pique your appetite with a conviction that God wouldn't ask us to do something without providing the means to do it. And that means in that word of world of desire, that world of thought. So we want to keep it real with you. And so right out of the gates, I'm inviting our two co-hosts, Mike and Walt, along with me to share a man up moment. I'm a father of seven children. Our eldest just turned 22nd, 22 years old yesterday. And our youngest um, is 14. So we were blessed to have six kids in seven years and one in heaven. We count our little Therese. We ask for her intercession for us. Anyways, my man up moment. The thought that challenged me was Jesus' words, if you've lusted after somebody, you've committed adultery. I'm a daily mass goer in general. I'm a prayerful guy. This is not something that, you know, was on my radar or part of my habit. So I needed something more clearly and to engage my wife in that sacramental context for grace in our marriage to pray for me was amazing. It was difficult, but it was amazing to get her to join me in prayer in that battle. Secondly, um, it softened my heart toward others who battle with this situation. It gave me a sensitivity to people who are out there and dealing with these circumstances. Um, thirdly, it wasn't enough just for that. I needed to act. I needed to structure my landscape for success. I engaged Covenant Eyes. I had it on my computers, and I would give this testimony to everybody. I don't have Covenant Eyes, and now you have Bark and Disney Circle, which I think are fabulous tools. I don't have them on my devices just for my kids. We're talking 90% plus of men who are impacted by this. 
So be ashamed, but don't be ashamed of the fact that God made you visual. He made us with that yearning for him, and we are under attack. So those three things were were consequential in my battle that made it a wonderful occasion for the second man up moment in my life. And that was as my young sons were becoming teenagers and into teenhood. Again, we had the filters and the computers, but to man up and to ask the questions, hey guys, how are you doing with the battle with the internet? And I will simply say, and daughters, I will just say there's been some impact there also. Even though we had filters to minimize this stuff, I had to man up and be a godly father and say, I'm with you in this battle. I get it. God made us desire him and the enemy is going to attack us through these means. But I'll say by manning up and bringing us together one-on-one and talking with my children, it's been a phenomenal occasion to see them grow, to see them be strengthened, and uh, just a support to let them know I'm with you in this. Is your dad, I love you. And to be candid and say, you know, I'm a guy. You know, I I get that influence. I get that attack. But we're a family. Let's be strong. Let's communicate these things together. So there's my longer than I expected man up moment, both for me personally and to be a father, to turn that around, to turn around in the road and to quell the enemy's attack in our lives, not in my home. Put the flag down and to turn it around and to start gaining victory and it's been awesome. And the journey continues, but those are moments that if you're in any of those places, do it. Let's go to Mike Waskovich. Man up moment, Mike. Well, not really related to this uh, pornography topic, but when uh, I was uh, first year of marriage, I had to leave my wife who's pregnant. I had to um, mm. go. I, was, I too was in the Air Force, had to go off to officer training school, not through the academy, just through a direct commission. And my grandfather just passed away. I had to miss his funeral for this. I really wanted to serve my country. And here Janine is six, seven, almost eight months pregnant. I was going to go live in Alabama for a couple of months uh, doing drills and learning how to wear the uniform and serve our country. And uh, it was so stressful um, trying to be there for my wife, trying to be there for my future daughter, trying to be there... um, for my country, trying to be there for my own parents and my grandfather. And I remember thinking, you know, I was really young. I was barely 22 and thinking, I got a man up. I'm the man of the house. I'm the man of the family. Um, I once count on me. And uh, I I draw back on that experience uh, fondly. It was hard to get through, but I think about it all the time when I'm dealing with something acutely like, you know, God put me in this position, gave me the means Um, with his help, not by myself, but gave us a a way to pick up our cross and showed us that way, uh, that I had to just man up and and be the husband and the father that he wants me to be. And uh, really try to do that every day um, of my life since. That's awesome, Mike. Thanks so much for sharing that and the courage to share that. Let's go to Walt, big man. So for me, uh, probably like all of us um, on right now, You could go story after story after story, right, of those situations where Christ has called you through the Holy Spirit to to man up, right, to to change in the direction that you're going. Um, For me, um, I think it was when I came into the Catholic Church and started to understand confession and then started to share with my other brothers in Christ, like, they would keep going to confession and kept battling with the same thing over and over and over. And I would actually use the word, you need to man up. Like at some point, you can't go to confession for the same damn thing every week for 10 years. You actually need to get better. And it honestly pissed me off. And, um, and so I looked at that myself, and it's like, you know, I too am going to confession for some of the same things five years in a row, six years in a row. I mean, the root of it's pride, right? Selfishness and pride. The root of it's pride. And so we, we're going to battle that till the day we die. Um, but manning up for me was looking at these things that were egregious um, and saying, they're just done. I'm done. Uh, I don't care if I have to fight the internal fight. It's just not going to happen again. It, I, I put it up there with like abortion or ever striking my wife, right? Never, ever going to happen will not happen. And I just put, I put these things in those categories. And uh, is it a struggle sometimes? Sure it is. Um, you know, we're visual people, as you said, and uh, thanks be to God, I find my wife very physically attractive. 
But it's a good thing. I think for those of us who are godly men, uh, the closer we come to Christ, the more we realize that we're in love with our wives, not because of their physical beauty. Mm. We are in love with our wives because of what they offer from their heart. And uh, I am so thankful to have a wife that um, she wouldn't even dream of ever uh, being involved in, in what we're talking about today. And I'm so thankful for that. So uh, that's my man up moment, buddy. That's awesome. Thank you, folks. You are tuned in to Ignite Radio Live over the broadcast world. And this new program called Man Up, which you can find at Pentecost365.us, streaming live, or if it's a replay and it's past this moment, you can always see this episode. And it's brand new. We want to create a context for men to be real, to be honest, to be heroic, and uh, to receive that grace. If there's anything that defines the political and ecclesial battle that what have we seen in the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years? The enemy has been battling below the surface, and that's allowed to happen if we don't speak about it. That's allowed to happen if we don't confess and acknowledge this to give others encouragement to know that we're going through the same stuff, and we're not going to leave it there. We want to battle this stuff together. Otherwise, we're just languishing. How many of us know men and women right now who are languishing, not because they love, don't love Jesus Christ, aren't even going to church and committed to their faith? It's because something in them has caused them to privatize it. The shame has kept them confined. And as being confined, they're cut off from the grace, the life of that grace, pouring from holy communion into holy community. This is an experience of holy community. It's got to end. The, en- the enemy's dominion has to end today. Those of you who are listening, and in this area, it's got to end today. And it's only going to end if we have the willingness in the way that these men shared to say, to confess, to know that God forgives us. He loves us. He wants to restore us, to come out of the darkness, come out of the shadows, come out of that languishing place, that prison cell, and into the light. Join us. We're sharing this candle to our struggles so that you can do the same and have confidence that God wants to reset that course, wants to turn us around. So anyways, um, before we get to Pastor Bo, we want to do a little bit of a setting here. I'm going to go back to my share screen here. So if you see our screen here again, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. So here's some stats. This is the reality in this culture that did not exist any time in history, ever. This accessibility, and let's just pronounce it, to mortal sin. No, it's God's ultimate determination because we know it's a cooperation in our souls and our will and all of that is woven into it. But the matter, the subject itself of pornography, of lust, in this way is grave matter. It's enough to send us to hell by our choice. That is not a small thing. And so here's a portrait. Please read this with that in mind, that we cooperate by the enemy seducing us. We receive it and we cooperate with it. And here's a portrait of how that battle looks in real life. Take a look at this screen if you're with us at Pentecost365.us. 90% of children ages 8 to 16 have viewed porn. I mean, how many of us naively, maybe as parents with our kids who have phones, think that they've never seen it or don't participate in it? And by the way, it only takes one image. The most potent sex organ is not what you think it is. It's our minds. One image remains in our memory and can skew the way we think about that relationship of the opposite sex and same sex, of community, of marriage, of family, of the world. Porn sites compromise or comprise 12% of the internet. Wow. The largest consumers of pornography, what would you say that would be if you didn't see this board? 12 to 17-year-old boys are the largest consumers of pornography at that critical time of forming their moral compass. You want to know what's wrong with maybe young men when they turn 30, 40, and 50? Well, this is where that compass is being thrown off course. The magnet is, is, is taking it out of its due north calibration. 70% of men ages 18 to 34 visit a porn site in a typical month. 70%. I'm not going to go through all these, but um, let's just go to pastors, for instance, this stat. 50% of pastors regularly look at porn. So those of you who are out there fearful of sharing this because of maybe the shame and you're viewed as a good person and we put so much effort to try to appear holy, we want to cross that chasm into becoming holy, from appearing holy to becoming holy. You're hearing the witness here and this punctuated in the stat that 50% of pastors look at porn. This does impact women and which for us as men ought to be just a a grievous thing. Those of us who care for our daughters and our wives, that there are women out there um, who are given to this uh, in a way that increasing numbers. 
So 9.4 million women access adult websites each month, 28% of the total amount who visit sites, at 28% of the total number who visit sites are women. And of course, we've got the men, Another some more stats here on the men, but the women I want to highlight here in a particular way. And I want to turn this storyboard over here again. If you go to Pentecost365.us, we're going to communicate verbally what, what we're seeing there, but it kind of helps to assimilate it. So Mike is in the medical arena, and I'm going to ask him to kind of walk us through the title of this board is The Effects of Pornography in the Brain. Lay it on us, Mike. There we go. Thanks, Greg. We're looking at a, a, a illustration of the human brain, and if you just kind of fall around clockwise, one through six, internet porn is as addictive like other substances, like tobacco, alcohol, drugs, in terms of its effect on the brain. You know, you stimulate that brain, that area of that brain, and it wants more. You want to keep hitting that button. Mm. Like other addictions, um, it activates the reward center in the brain, stimulates certain cocktails of chemicals that give you a high, that's, that's usually dopamine and, and some other neurotransmitters. Over time, like anything um, that's uh, in overabundance, over time, your body uh, builds up a tolerance. So it needs more, it wants more. And you start to you know, maybe lose some of that self-control. Like an addict, regular consumers, I'm at number four, end up turning to porn more often and seeking more extreme versions of of porn in order to, to maybe get back that same excitement. Uh, number five, these images, as Greg just mentioned, are, are really kind of seared and burned into the mind uh, and can really stay with someone um, for a long time. Uh, and, and so breaking this addiction, just like a, a cocaine addiction or just like a, um, a, a alcohol addiction, um, tobacco addiction, the chemical addiction, that, that to separate uh, is – is a little easier than the behavioral addiction and some of the other psychosomatic addictions. And so the good news, what we can land on as we tee this up for Pastor Bo, uh, is that um, if, you, if you're if you not reinforcing these pathways, they do eventually disappear. And, and there are professionals and uh, counselors and pastors that, as Greg said, are, are working on this is a big part of their ministry. And so it can be overcome, uh, but it starts with, that person making that active choice. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much. So folks, we're glad you're with us. Again, to the main board here, Man Up is what we're about. You're listening live on Ignite Radio Live over the broadcast world. And we invite you to join us at Pentecost365.us where you can see this streaming. And uh, we're just so glad that you're with us to go deeper, to be challenged, to turn it around. All of us can stand to be purified all the more for the benefit of ourselves, our spouses, and our families. And we want to receive that grace, Christ's teaching, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. With that as a setting, I uh, just want to welcome you again back, Pastor Bo, to uh, just lead us through uh, the, the most important insights, if you will, as we endeavor to, to engage in this battle. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you so much. If we could go back to the brain, that, that brain image, because let's start with the individual and we'll roll up to, to uh, how this impacts the community. Number one, uh, thank you, Mike. You did a, a wonderful job because one of the things we have to embrace, and our, our Western culture doesn't embrace us enough, but the scripture does. Our mind, our spirit, our mind, our emotions, and our actions flow together, and they are driven together. So look at number one. Research has found internet porn and addictive substances like tobacco have a similar effects on the brain. What is addiction? Let me give you a, a spiritual aspect of addiction. Addiction simply is an inability to cope with the pressures of the world. Mm. We all are addicted. The question is to what and to whom. Mm. So it starts there. And if you train your, your mind, if you train your actions, if you train your emotions to be addicted to anything other than Jesus Christ, you have a problem. Mm. That's it. It's that simple. And so when our children at age 12, 13, 14, where the mind opens up twice, they say, uh, in early childhood for learning, and the learning's rapid and neural patterns are formed, and again in the early teen years. And so if a person is interjecting into their mind images of pornography, they're not only interjecting that, and it's not only going to change their neural patterns within their brain, it's actually going to impact how they see the world, 
and how they see others. And so that's why that early, those early teen years are so critical because not only is it, is, it, is it societal, not only is it spiritual, it's also physiological. And that's why that, that those years have to be protected because their minds are very susceptible to impression. And as you move to this down, you see number two, uh, addiction activates dopamine and other type of uh, internal drugs. That's why porn addiction is actually more powerful in many respects because you carry the drugs with you. Now, there's a lot of things that are obstacles to our loving the Lord with all our heart and all our soul and all our strength. And what we, what we have in society are, are these obstacles, and they're, one is pride, and Walt, you're right on target. Pride is what really generates of many of these obstacles, these addictions. And we can talk more about that later. But as these, if we learn to cope with life using other things than Christ, not only do we shape our, our present and, and future, but we, we, we actually are helping to create obstacles between us and, and Christ. And that has a devastating impact. And what is that devastating impact? Well, to, in, I've looked at the CDC, and um, there was a study at, for, from Yale University. Right now in the United States, 40% of the children are born out of wedlock. Mm. You see, why is that? That's because men and women to some degree, but men have allowed themselves to become formed by things in society rather than be formed and conform to the image of Christ. And as that happens, a lot, there are many, many ramifications. There's personal ramifications of shame, of using something to, to cope with life with that's not healthy for you. There's a, there is an escalation of behavior, as, as the, that one chart shows, where you have to up the ante. Well, what does that mean for society? When men up the ante regarding sex, it's always detrimental to society, detrimental to themselves, as well as detrimental to, um, to the women in their lives. You know, pornography is not a, a, a victimless crime. There's somebody on the other side of that screen. And often they're being trafficked. And we know just spiritually, even if they're willing to do what they're doing, it's terrible for them. We know that as, as moral creatures, no matter if we are Christians or non-Christians, we know for someone to denigrate themselves is not a, a good thing for that person, just on a human level. And so as we, uh, if people allow themselves to get caught up in these addictions, they actually fuel the things that are destroying our society, from abortion to human trafficking mm -hmm. to divorce to, and you name it, out, kids out of wedlock, which we know creates poverty, and, the, and there's issues with poverty. All these things stem from the personal decisions we make as individuals. Awesome. Any thoughts on that, Walt, Mike? What struck you? Questions? so far well i mean it, it it's great job first and foremost uh really kind of elevating um the uh the importance and the significance that this is for each of us and our eternal souls but our communities our families our country um i've long believed that uh the breakdown of our country is re directly related to the breakdown of the family mm. And so young men not being formed or conformed properly from that, those vital years, a child uh, and then an adolescent, um, you insert this you know, evil uh, over the computer that's you know, many struggle with. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. And I, and I want to go back to both what Greg and Walt said. You know, we got to man up. If you're in that situation, you got to say never again. Like I'm claiming my life, my wife, my family, my community. I'm claiming that for Christ, that territory right now. And I think you really laid it out. Like it, there's, there's no gray area. You're either on the path to destruction or you're on the path to life. There's no like, let my pride come up with a third option. So I, I think, uh, 
think that's really well done. Thank you. Well, so last night uh, we decided to watch a family movie. And obviously by family movie, that normally means a cartoon, right? Because I got littles. Um, but we, we watched, uh, we, I, I don't know, I, my kids have watched like the same 20 movies, you know, 100 times, right? Because we know they're safe. We've reviewed them, you know. So last night I said, well, let's, wa- let's watch a new movie. And um, which sometimes goes well and sometimes it doesn't. So we watched this new movie and it's a cartoon, okay? There's no bad words or anything, but they, you know, if you guys have noticed in these, in these cartoon movies now, they're trying to make them uh, more attractive to adults, right? So, yeah. so the imagery is, you know, and the innuendos and everything. Well, that wasn't the issue. It was, it was just kind of a darker movie, okay? Within the first five minutes, we realized my three-year-old and five-year-old son were covering their eyes. Wow. They're scared. And I said, oh, done. We're done. And the thing of it is, is looking back, I can remember watching scary movies, like not often, right? But just by accident, like with my dad, realized, ooh, this is scary. I'm shutting this off, right? But that imagery is with me today. When I watched it when I was six. And, and, I, and I, so again, you know, discussing, what, you know, this topic today, um, it's amazing how this imagery, right? has an impact on you and when it when when our when our littles are exposed to it it never ever ever goes away never goes away and it was a beautiful example last night um because i had to tell my little boys you know when i'm putting them to bed i'm like hey you know that was a cartoon right it was not real that is absolutely not real and and uh but unfortunately if they watch pornography those people are real those are real souls there so this work you know this is the big leagues in terms of nasty um, so anyways, I, Pastor Bill, I could probably listen to you for about two hours. <laughs> you must be, a, you must do some preaching because you're good. <laughs> On occasion, but, uh. You got a yeah. great haircut. I really <laughs> like your haircut. Thank you so much. I need my barber back. We got to get this COVID-19 thing over. <laughs> <laughs> There's a different uh, level of parenting because of this porn culture, especially when our children begin dating. That's a whole subject altogether. We'll take it another time. I have strong views about this. We don't realize that with 90% of young men who have seen porn, many who have had moments of addiction or engagement with it, the degree to which that has affected and messed up the way that they think, which is to say the way they think about our daughters. <laughs> and you know what? It's not going to be worn on their sleeve. I viewed pornography. You're not going to know it. You're going to see them in church. You're going to see them lifting their hands in worship. You're going to see them engaged in many ways. But under the hood is a mess. We had a good 20 years or 30 years of solidity without having that kind of battle. This generation has only known that kind of battle from late grade school and into high school. And so just as a sort of an anecdote, From a woman's standpoint, my wife was with a group of godly Catholic women, this is about seven or eight years ago, a gathering on a Saturday morning, having their coffee, maybe seven or eight women. These would have been the 5% committed, faithful, EWTN, praying the rosary, reading the book, solid women. And the subject came up about intimacy with their spouse. And my wife was the odd man out. I will say there of the seven, six of them all shared tearfully the tremendous challenges they are having now in godly, holy marriages because of the decisions they made prior to marriage. Now, in those cases, it was sexual activity, whether it be with their current spouse or before, but, but pornography is sexual activity. Pornography is an engagement. It is, as we said earlier, if you lust, you commit adultery. And the the effect of their wiring, their emotions, their souls, who wants to be united with their spouse and have have the thought that their mind and heart is on some other dude, on some other guy, as men? Now, that's not the end of the story. There's purification. And this is where maybe you could take the baton and go further with this, Pastor Bo. It's not the end of the story. But just to punctuate, this is not an inconsequential thing. Right. No, it's that, and we talked about it, and this, it looks bleak, but it's not because Jesus Christ has risen. Mm. And because he rose, we rise. We will rise with him one day perfectly. Let me just say this very simply uh, medical science has uh, finally joined Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. 
when we said the brain could be rewired, that means in, in scriptural speak, uh, speak uh, sense, we can have the mind of Christ. And so right now, uh, Pure Desire did a study over the years, and it's, it's probably a little dated now, about six, seven years old, but they, uh, they interviewed or took a survey, mostly evangelical churches, and about 70 to 75% of the men in church had struggled with pornography. Wow. So what are some of the, I'm just going to give one statement, and I'm going to leave it there. If you are not telling your children about sex and about life, um, the street is. So you have a choice. Either you're telling them or the street will tell them. Mm. It's your choice. Regarding your younger ladies, fathers, you have to explain to them how men think. Do not leave it to your wives. They, they should add, but they have to hear from their dads. This is how men think. So I don't want to get too riled up because I have two daughters, many nieces, and a lot of young women in this church that uh, I love. So, uh, you know, the prospects of uh, some of their, their futures with men in this cu culture is a little scary at times, but God is greater. Mm -hmm. This is the, the hope I want to give to you. Because of the community of believers, because of the scriptures, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, you can overcome, but you have to be humble and mm -hmm. transparent and start the journey of, of freedom. If you are humble, transparent, and you join with other men, you begin that journey of freedom. The Bible speaks of the renewing of the mind. The Bible and, and the power of the Holy Spirit will renew your mind to such an extent, I will testify to you this from my own life, because I was caught up in sexual sin and pornography for too long. There are, I have lost some of those. I have lost most of those memories. They don't haunt me anymore. The Bible, the, the, my mind has been renewed. And I can say this, I've been working with men now for eight years. I'm working on the, my eighth group. It's the ninth group in the church. Usually it's guys between about two to five guys in a group. Many of them report the same things. They are no longer haunted by the imagery that they, in, they took in while they were watching porn or even committing sexual sin. Why is this so critical to our families again? If, and this is a funny thing. We kind of agree with the feminist in this one, and the secular feminist. You should not objectify human beings. Mm. I think we could agree to that. Mm. Why? Because we are made in the image of God, Genesis. The first three chapters of Genesis are so critical. I, I encourage parents to teach their children these chapters as actually in vitro. Speak it to them while they're in, still in their mother's womb. <laughs> I'm serious about this. And then speak it to them when they're able to understand. Because once you understand that we are made in God's image, then the sanctity of life is play, put at the right place. Why has a, abortion occurred? Well, before we had abortion, we had pornography starting in the 1950s. Mm. Actually, the, uh, there's a, a woman who's done great research in this area. Her name is Dr. Judith Reisman. And I encourage people to look her up on the website uh, because she is, she's talked more. She's the most profound expert in the world on pornography's impact on society. Mm -hmm. But when people start objectifying each other, all kinds of heinous things can occur. And so these issues of our individual purity, why do we need a man up? Because our souls are dependent upon it. Our families, the society are all dependent upon us living for Christ and doing the right thing. That's awesome. I'll say a big thing also for men who have, which is the vast majority of men who battled with this, are we more interested in our comfort than we are in eternal life? Yeah. And what, what kind of shifts that around, I think, a little bit is saying, Lord, am I willing to suffer? Am I willing to sacrifice for your glory rather than sin is the way I want to put it. And if we have that mindset that I'd rather suffer, I'd rather recognize that martyrdom is not that moment that uh, somebody comes before us with a scimitar and is going to chop our head off by denying Christ. You know, martyrdom is played out in these moments in the interior where we are tempted to lust. We are tempted to make a decision acting upon what's in the interior. And so, I, again, I just 
invite us to think about maybe that simple prayer, Lord Jesus, I would rather suffer, I'd rather unite my suffering with you than sin. I, I love the way Pastor Bo says you should be addicted to Christ. And if, it, and if you're thinking and you're putting your attention on something else, it's, it's probably misdirected. So really to take your prayers and make that kind of the center of your life and be talking to, to Jesus throughout the day, throughout your struggles, thanking him for those things that are going well, but helping you carry your cross. And then he mentioned about like, talk to your daughters, talk to your sisters, talk to your, the other ladies in your life. I grew up one of four boys, no sisters. We really didn't um, have those type of conversations. I wasn't sure what uh, women thought. And when I've mentioned in the past, uh, when I started dating now my wife and really got close to my father-in-law, he has four girls. He was never shy about what guys are thinking, what guys are trying to do, what they're trying to pull kind of the wool over some of the ladies' eyes. He helped me kind of raise my own standard. And I certainly have done that as a father of five daughters. Um, not shy about it. You don't have to make a big deal out of it. But I completely agree with the, with the um, pastor that if you're not doing that, their misinformation or the information on the street or in school, on the Internet, that's what's going to form your, your sons and daughters. So we shouldn't be fearful of our responsibility. We're accountable. As Walt's wife uh, has, has said recently, I'm accountable to help my children get to heaven. And when I stand before God, I need to represent what I invested in them. And that I could tell, that, I don't know if that's a fear or if that's an, a, an accountability, but she lives that. And I think us men need to do that too. Amen. <laughs> before we get to the soon to be famous Mike's memes, um, I'm going to ask Walt for your thoughts on this and uh, cue you up, Pastor Bo, prior to what will be the famous Mike's memes. Why? Because it's alliteration and he has the M in his name and we want to have some memes. So anyways, um, before that, though, so cueing you up, Pastor Bo, just some concrete, I'm going to ask you in a moment to share concrete steps. I know that this is a process and it's thicker and richer than what can be communicated in a few moments, but some practical steps for men right now. And then I also want you, you to include maybe some practical thoughts for spouses or for women to help them maybe understand what might be very unique to men. We know men, women struggle also, but just to those women who maybe, and I know there are many who are grieving right now for godly men who are really battling this. So to speak to both of them before that, we'll give you a sh chance to shout out. Uh, so uh, we homeschool and our children don't have access to cell phones and laptops and iPads and, you know, they can't turn the TV on. We don't have cable and everything. Um, with all due respect to the positives of, the, of, 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 of those uh, devices and so forth, mm -hmm. I actually think they're from the devil. Uh, mm -hmm. So we just despise uh, allowing, you know, our kids to have those things. With that being said, uh, you know, when we go over to their cousin's homes, right, and stuff like that, we're not paying attention to what our 12-year-old niece is talking about, right, with our, with our 11 year old daughter, for example. And we know that there may very well be, and the older they get, words and conversations and so forth. Our kids are smart. As you said, they're sponges. They pick everything up. At what age would you recommend for boys and girls, our oldest is 11, right, and our oldest three are girls. Um, I love them to death. I, you know, we pray with them every single day. At what age would you recommend um, really sitting them down and telling them, um, right, the, if you will, uh, age representative of the birds and the bees and, you know, this is how men think. And, you know, I know you're going to start thinking, you know, boys are cute, you know, and, and that stuff. And, and, you know, and that's okay to think that, right? And um, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, good, great question. Um, first of all, I recommend, and I was very serious about the Genesis, starting in vitro, start talking to them about the story of Adam and Eve mm -hmm. and how God created man and man and woman. So they have that imagery of truth deep. And, I, and I, I'll, I'll exaggerate because Jesus exaggerated some things, right? He said, cast out your eye if it, if it causes you to sin. So 
That should be established. Second, don't have a sit down talk with them. Have a continual conversation with them well into their 20s about intimacy. So you're, you're, you're changing a tire, talk to your son. You're out there kicking a the, uh, soccer ball, playing catch, talk to him about manhood. You're talking to your daughter, you're, you're playing catch with her, shooting baskets. Talk to her about how, you know, how she's beautiful because God made her beautiful. And you start talking to her and you're starting to teach them how to look at one another with substance and with God's eyes. And then from there, you can start introducing these bigger topics that go across. They're not just sexual. They're, they're in, our topics of intimacy and how we see each other. And that's what I would recommend, that type of discussion. And then you, when you do have the birds and the bees discussion, quote unquote, it's in context of intimacy, not just sex. So you could talk to them. Like my mom used to sit there and tell me, tell me things like when I was watching TV and I was all enraptured with the Dallas Cowboys playing, she'd go, you know, when your son comes to talk to you, turn off the TV and talk to him. Now she's telling me, uh, she's talking to me about having being a father when I was 11 years old, 10 years old. Okay. And so these, it's, so it's, you got to sneak up on them. If you have the big lecture, they're going to turn you off but you give them a little bit of conversation over the years and, and you start talking and, and talk about, uh, you know, real feelings. Like I have a discussion with my son. I said, yeah, does that girl make you feel real rigorous? And like, I'm real, like, feel like a real man and stuff like that. And you talk to him about that emotion and you say, yeah, that's a great emotion, but it, it has a catch 22 to it. So that doesn't necessarily mean because a girl makes you feel that way. That doesn't mean you should be dating her. You know, that, that, that's an emotional response. You got to think more clearly. And we got to help them because when testosterone, on the boys' side and girls, when estrogen and testosterone start flowing, it's really hard for them to think clearly. And that's still flowing for a while. One quick comment. All that I would totally agree with. I would also say, and, and Walt, you, you described this with the family movie night. It's a lot about what we're saying, but it's a lot about what we're doing. Yes. Absolutely. And so, you know, my wife and I, if, if we want to put something on Netflix and we don't think this is age appropriate for the kids, we kind of look at ourselves and like, if it's not okay for them, why is it okay for us? Hmm. So the actions and yeah. how kids learn through seeing, you know, to what your mom taught you, turn the football game off and spend time with your son. So I, I, I try, it's a daily struggle to invest that time, five minutes here. 30 seconds there, but you know, kids are, are learning all different kind of ways. So you have to talk to them and be fearless, but your actions have to back that up. I a hundred percent agree with you, Mike. And let me, let me read a scripture because Jesus agrees with Please me. Please do. Uh, this is in the epistles of the apostle John. By this, we know love that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. And Jesus speaks of this even in Matthew chapter 25. And the Apostle John speaking in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. Agape love is the highest form of love. But agape o love is thought and action. James makes it very clear. Faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. And so, yes, Mike, you're right on. We got to talk it. We got to live it. And I would say also, brothers, uh, we need to admit to our children when we, when we fail, not, you know, in, in the right context at the right age, but, you know, our, especially our, I think, you know, boys and girls, young men and young women. Hey, these are the traps that I fell in. And I don't want you to fall in these traps. Mm. I want you to do better. And don't be afraid to, to be positive uh, and share yeah. moments with your spouse in front of your children. If I can sneak a kiss with my wife and let my sons and daughters know this is how Absolutely. you constantly court your wife. Yes. That's yes. a great positive. Absolutely. I, I have a, my youngest daughter. She loves when my, her mom and dad are affectionate. She pushes us together and squeezes us together. <laughs> I'm like, girl. It's kind of like a magnet of, of the universe. When a husband and wife come together, our kids like just swarm around us in yes. general, which is kind of cool. We're coming in for a landing for this episode fairly quickly. I did want to at least give you my two cents, Walt, on your question. I don't know of a single parent whose children have had digital devices navigating through high school who didn't communicate more lament than they did delight and joy. 
whether that's by letting them have the device or a failure to moderate it for them, it evidently constitutes an occasion of great sin and grave sin. At the same time, Maximilian Kolbe, the technology is with us. And at some point, there does need to be a cultivation of the virtue to use it well. Uh, In our home, none of our kids personally owned a digital device until they were a junior in high school. I'd say even after that, there was a bit of some challenges. This is with the filters. I can't say strongly enough, get Bark on the phones, B-A-R-K, which allows parents to oversee everything. Secondly, get Disney's Circle, which allows us to manage the online time. Now, we're a homeschooling family. We use, uh, there's the curriculum, so it's a bit of a misnomer. We have curriculum, we have teachers, we have all of that. It's not all online but, you know, because of that, there is a little bit of a, of a dependency or a tool in using that. I would recommend highly the book by Catherine Price, How to Break Up with Your Phone. It doesn't suggest to be that radical that get rid of the phone. It's just describing the realities, the challenges, the dangers, the neurology, all of that. And I think it's important that parents before a child has a personal device, that they understand that, and that they understand that you, out of love, are paving the path in their home with that love of their use of their devices and that you are fully, not just partially, kind of, sort of, but you are fully appraised of their online activity, fully, 100%. Until they leave the home and even beyond, if they want to allow you to do that, that is love, parents. If you're not attuned to your kids, you're basically saying, I'm allowing Satan possibly to drag them into the depths of hell. I hate to be that graphic. No, I don't because that, that's the truth and that's the reality that will impact their life forever. Pastor Bo, stick with us. We're going to land this plane. It's so awesome that you joined us. I know we're going to have you again here in this first uh, edition of Man Up. And uh, with that, we're going to go to Mike's Memes, a beloved uh, component of what will become regular for this Man Up segment. Mike, so, Man Up Memes. That's a, that's a lot of all right, good, good, good. So let me, let me get to these bad boys. Number one. Yeah, I'm going to need you to Man Up today. So, like, I was <laughs> definitely thinking of Walt. Uh, when when I found this one, um, he probably looks at that when he's looking at his honey to do list, or you know, uh, very overused meme, but I like it. Awesome. I don't own I don't own suspenders though. <laughs> All right, so for Pastor Bo and I, uh, who were in the military, now we it sounds like we're both officers. So I didn't have this exact moment, but I had something similar to this. Um, the exact moment you started to question your choices. Time to man up cupcake. <laughs> and I love the guy's face. Uh, look, at, look at the look on his face with his shirt that reads beast. <laughs> so he had a man up moment at some point. I don't think it was right there. That's awesome. And just a quick note, which of us truly don't need a loving drill sergeant? I mean, I think right. men want somebody who loves them enough to be bold to speak life. And then hopefully we're going to become that kind of program. Who knows? Maybe we'll even have those sorts of events, but where you are loved, you're accepted, but somebody loves you enough to speak truth and life into your life. That's God's vision for a godly manhood, a godly community of disciples. Next. All right. So sawdust, (laughs) you mean man glitter. So like (laughs) as, as Greg articulated at the top of the show, you know, we're meant to be outdoors. We're, we're, um, we love nature. Uh, this guy um, doesn't really care how he looks. Um, he's <laughs> obviously manned up, hopefully got his project done. It looks like he made quite a bit of a mess. But, uh, <laughs> you know, if you talk to your wife or ladies in, in, in your life, most like manly men. And so this kind of spoke to me like we are who we are. It's let's awesome. Again, let's, let's claim it for Christ. Amen. I love that. All right. Couple more. So, you know, there's no good meme without Chuck Norris. So, I will find you and, and what? <laughs> My apologies. I dialed the wrong number, Chuck. I mean, oh, that's awesome. Perfect. Uh, so, like, this guy is standing in the gap. He is mm-hmm. the man. And, you know, whether it's Liam Neeson, you know, he, he's, he's staring down whatever, evil, whatever temptation he's manning up on the phone awesome he's the unbreakable wall and last but not least a good punctu- a good punctuation mark for this very first man up program we've talked a lot about like the world that we're in today um i'm afraid of a world ran by adults 
who you would never it like him kids know. and got trophies just for participating. So this is actually a quote from the actor Clint Eastwood. And, you know, he, he wasn't getting participation trophies in order to, you know, pull off this, this look that I actually think Chuck Norris is scared of Clint Eastwood. That, that um, could be, possible. it could be. So, you know, you got to say it like him, Mike, can you, can you imitate his accent and say it? I'm afraid of a world run by adults who were never spanked <laughs> as kids. And got trophies just for participating. As he pulls out his gun. That's great. I think you just did way better than I could. Right? Yeah, sorry. I think that's my last one. Awesome. The shortest man imitating Clint Eastwood. Yeah, exactly. But uh, anyways, we'll leave that one alone. Hey, folks, we're so blessed that you were with us for this very first episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We're in the sandbox here working it out. But it's our deepest hearts, truthfully, yearning for intimacy with God, to live fully the calling that God has for us. And just to be real about it, right? I mean, a little messy tonight, which is good. Just honesty, candor, talking about some hard-hitting issues. We don't want to waste our time with softballs. I mean, there's a time and a place for that, but that's not what this is about. We want to introduce the hard-hitting, challenging issues with hope and confidence that in the grace of Jesus Christ, with brotherhood in our marriages and families, we can live this thing. That we can live this thing abundantly, that we can live this thing fully. So we invite you to join us. You can find out more about this at Pentecost365.us, which is an invitation in particular for men to live, to be ignited in everyday faith, not just during Lent or during Advent or some special season. We ask the question at Pentecost 365, what does ordinary everyday receiving this grace look like? Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to receive the grace? God is pouring it out. We invite you to join us in receiving it. With no further ado, we say adieu. We love you guys. We're in the arena with you. Uh, know that you, when you're manning up, let's do it together. Let's be transparent with our wives. Let's bring our families together to talk and pray. That is the firepower that scares the hell. I don't think he can scare the hell out of Satan because he's in hell. But you know what I'm saying. Scare the, scare the hell out of the dominion of Satan because he can't stand against the image of God, which is what? Man and woman. We are the image of God. Our families are icons of the Trinity. And does this world not to see need to see the image of God in humanity? The answer is yes. And I probably I, I wanted to say this. Mm-hmm. Just tell if a guy needs help to contact you, mm. your your ministry, because that's really the first step. They need help from me. You know, you can bring them to me, or you guys want to do something. I can help you. Whatever, but. They need us. They have to get transparent. They have to step out and say, "I need to be. I get free." Amen. Yeah. Appreciate that, brother. Hey, I love you guys. God bless you. Pray for this, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. God bless. Nice God bless. You guys.